today I think we will just go through all of the twinkle variations. Um, we had started the foundations of twinkle last time, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, why don't we just review monkey song and flower song? <laughs> to it mm -hmm. i think if you just flatten that out a little bit and uh, your whole arm can move as a unit from your elbow all the way through your fingers i i do like that your bow is tilted slightly but your wrist doesn't have to be too bent like that okay to it but it feels a lot more uh natural because i feel like after after the fact i had to kind of have to unbend <laughs> right i mean a little bit of bend is good mm -hmm. whenever you have too much bend right here that kind of just breaks up the energy line and it, this is not a very natural position to move in right right this is more natural for your hand there is still a little bit of bend it shouldn't be completely locked into place Mm -hmm. but a little bit more single line of energy going through to your knuckles there. But let's go on to the uh, flower song. Do you remember how that goes? Mm -hmm. Let me I, play. Don't, I don't remember the name. I, I, I know okay. how it goes. Okay. So this is the one that starts on open E. talked about giving yourself some time to do the string crossing before oh yes mm -hmm. so it's totally fine to practice it like this pause roll then play okay i'm, I'm kind of focused on my my wrist sorry <laughs> there's a lot of things to think about So now, um, can you play Flower Song backwards? Yes. <laughs> Let's start with A. Awesome. Now, combine that with the second half of Monkey Song. OK. sharp B. String crossing.
I forget. Am I allowed to put just one finger down or do I have yes. to put all three? Yes. Okay. So we talked about this last lesson. When mm. you're going up the scale, I like to keep the fingers down. Okay. But if you're going down the scale, I use independent fingers. Okay. Got it. you're hearing a lot of the things you don't want to hear scratches like lack of coordination stuff like that but this is your first time doing this and you're doing great okay why do you sound sad <laughs> i just and you know do you remember that uh episode of i love lucy where she does ballet um and she well she was like trying to like be be in one pose and then like her her, her teacher was like hitting her and she was like doing this and then she's like oh yeah now bad. and she's like trying to do this and she can't because she has so many like things to remember like yeah. I think that's me like I'm looking at my wrist and I realize I'm changing strings and then when I change the string I'm already on the next note and I forget the next note and it's just you know, it's just a lot in my head right now violin is all about thinking about a million things at once <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> we have to think about our posture bow hold, bow till intonation, sound quality, um, string crossings, even just playing on one string at a time is really hard for us. It's a lot different from playing piano, right? Right, right. <laughs> yeah, so it'll all come with time. Your muscles will start to remember things. Just enjoy the process. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> <This> <laughs> is, crossing is a lot to think about because you also have to put your finger down. So this is what I would do. Third finger down, string cross, then play. Okay. Got it, okay. Okay. Um, I had a question. I generally put my finger really last minute. Is that not good practice? Um, let's try it in slow motion. Okay. So try it like this. Place, play. Place the finger, lift the finger. Place, lift, play. So think of it that mechanically for now. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, that was way more in tune. It was really clean. Okay. I know it's very slow right now, but I would practice it that way until you feel comfortable enough to speed it up. Okay. For now, it's totally fine to think one step at a time. Okay. Sounds yeah. good. Okay. Now the last part of Twinkle, you already know it's just like the beginning. Flower mm -hmm. song backwards, second half of monkey song. Okay.
was that in my head, either I'm rushing to the string or I'm taking too much time. Does it sound okay on your end? Yeah, okay. I would say at this point, don't be afraid to take too much time. Okay. We can always practice with a metronome once you get comfortable with all the mechanics that you're doing, mm -hmm. coordination between your left and right hand. Uh, but for now, it's better to take too much time than, than to not take any time and lose the coordination that you have. Okay. I know that, um, I mean, I said I didn't practice very much, but I did practice maybe 10, uh, I mean, I guess five to 10 minutes uh, on average every other day. But I feel, I find myself like going through the motions, right? And then thinking that it's right. And then when I get to you, I sound not so awesome, <laughs> right? So I, I feel like I've, I've been more successful with string crossing when I'm not playing for you and then when you're not teaching. But then when I play for you, it just sounds awful. But then, but then you, you give me those hints and then I'm fine. So I must have not done it while I was practicing as well, but I guess I wasn't discerning. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. So okay. how would you, how would I practice? I, yeah, this is such a common issue. So I have, I guess, two suggestions. First, just a general practicing tip is aim for one minute a day. <laughs> okay. Because that's a very doable goal, right? Getting that consistency, even if it's just one minute a day, is going to help you more than doing it longer sessions every other day. So I'm sure that most times you'll start for a minute and then you'll end up playing 5, 10, 15 minutes. But even if it's just one minute, you got that consistency in. Okay. The second thing in terms of just not going through the motions and, you know, being very mindful when you practice, start recording yourself while you practice, just pull out your phone. And I'm sure you have like some kind of app that can record you or take a video of yourself. And mm -hmm. then and that way you become your own teacher. Ah, okay. I think sometimes when I'm hearing myself play while I'm practicing, I'm like my best critic. And then when I hear myself well, after recording, I'm my worst critic. So I try to shy away from the latter, but then I don't actually, I'm not really practicing because you know, sometimes I'm pretty successful going from A to E and then I just keep thinking that I'm successful when I'm really supposed to be practicing the string crossing, right? Like, mm -hmm. I, I feel like sometimes I forget that yeah. you keep having to practice your string crossing because it needs more work versus like, oh yeah, I was successful today, you know, like, oh yeah, I got it right. So I'm going to move on, you know? <laughs> so. I think we're all like that. And then adding the recording into the mix it will just completely change your practicing because it's a different way of self-evaluation right. it's painful but it's effective <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's Definitely. what i would do uh, but i mean i know as an adult student you're really busy that's why i would just start with tiny manageable goals to just start with that consistency one minute a day and i guess the last question is um you know when i used to practice when I used to, when I practiced piano, um, my, my teachers used to say, like, when you spot your mistake, you practice the same part over and over again. Do you suggest me practicing the, like, let's say I have a hard time with strict string crossing from the E string to the A string. Do I practice those three or four notes to make it better? Or do I kind of practice from beginning to end or in small sections? Like how, how should I approach my uh, problem areas? I'm a fan of breaking things into small sections and fixing mistakes right on the spot where they happen. Like if you make a mistake in the middle of the piece, don't go back to the beginning of the piece. Just <laughs> practice that middle of the piece until you get it right. But don't do mindless repetitions. I would maybe set a goal like I'm going to do this five times correctly. Mm -hmm. Once you do it five times correctly, then you move on. And then maybe the next day you can come back to that same spot. But you don't want to just start to play it like a zombie without thinking about what you're doing okay sounds good okay Pretty thank you that's <laughs> <not> helpful <laughs>